the second type of digestive glands the second type of digestive glands are gastric glands now this is the structure of stomach we already discussed the structure of stomach so this area is the cardiac stomach and this area above that line that elevated dome like structure is called as fundic stomach this area is the pyloric stomach and this is the body of the stomach it is also called body or corpus of the stomach yeah so where are gastric glands present now i told you inside inside the stomach inside the wall of the stomach there is a mucus layer millimeter thickness mucus layer is present now when i remove the mucus layer yeah so so there is a mucus layer like that so inside you will find pits these pits are called gastric pits they are also called foveolic gastric there is there are tubular glands now in 1 square millimeter there are up to 90 to 100 gastric pits and in each pit there are up to 3 to 7 gastric glands inside one pit there are 3 to 7 gastric glands so that's the location inside the mucosa of stomach so out of the four layers in the mucosa layer you will find gastric glands based on location the gastric glands are three types one is the cardiac glands so when i say the cardiac glands they are present inside the cardiac stomach and they only produce the cells produce mucus the second type of gastric glands are pyloric glands the pyloric glands are present in the pyloric stomach the major secretions of these glands also they produce mucus Now when i say mucus the cells are nothing but the next cells or goblet cells they produce that mucus apart from this the pyloric glands also contains g cells g cells produce a hormone called gastrin specifically in this area there are cells called g cells g for gastrin they produce gastrin whenever food is coming into the stomach immediately secretions are not produced so there is a hormone reaction there the hormone responsible for secretion of gastric juice is gastrin it comes from the pyloric stomach apart from the mucus lastly the fundic glands also called auxentic glands the third type of gastric glands is fundic glands or auxentic glands now location they are present in the fundus they are present in the corpus fundic glands they are present in fundus they are also present in the body so throughout this area you will see fundic glands also called as auxentic glands structurally all this all the three types of glands are structurally similar the secretions and type, nature of cells will vary now if you see the fundic glands fundic glands if you see the types of cells present in the fundic glands one is the chief cells also called peptic cells also called gymogen cells
gastric chief cells, gastric peptic cells or gastric zymogen cells, all same. Hmm? So these are the cells which produce enzymes. The enzymes includes pepsinogen, proreneine, and also another enzyme called gastric lipase. Enzymes, the inactive form of pepsin, pepsinogen, the inactive form of renin, R-E-N-N-I-N, R-E-N-I-N, it is something which is present in excreted system. This is pro-renin. Pro-inactive. Of course, this active form is called renin. R-E-N-N-I-N. Right? And gastric lipase. Action of gastric lipase is negligible. Now, these are the enzymes produced from the chief cells. Other types of cells include the auxentic cells also called parietal cells, also called delomorphous cells. Auxentic cells, parietal cells or delomorphic cells, all same. Secretions includes hydrochloric acid and Cassel's intrinsic factor. Hydrochloric acid and Cassel's intrinsic factor. Hydrochloric acid uh, gives that SDT to gastric juices 0.9 to 1.8 highly SD. That SDT comes from hydrochloric acid. Now, how is this hydrochloric acid produced? Now, if I take that cell, inside the cell, the cell surrounding the stomach, they take in carbon dioxide and water and they form carbonic acid. The carbonic acid readily dissociates. So, it forms H plus ions and bicarbonates. Actively by using energy it will pump protons or H plus ions into the cavity. So from this cell into the cavity H plus ions are actively pumped. This bicarbonate ions are exchanged for chloride ions. So here we have sodium and chloride. In the extracellular fluid there is sodium chloride. So, for exchange of bicarbonate, one for every bicarbonate ion, one chloride ion is taken. And that chloride ion is also pumped. That's how hydrochloric acid is actually produced. So, HCl, it comes from carbonic acid. Carbonic acid comes from the carbon dioxide produced inside the cell. Right? After protons are pumped inside, extracellular fluid, chloride ions are also pumped inside. That's how HCl is produced. HCl activates certain enzymes, it kills bacteria. Cassel's intrinsic fact, given by Cassel, a scientist called Cassel, there are both extrinsic as well as intrinsic factors. Extrinsic factor is vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is cyanocobalamin. So when I am taking food along with B12, B12 is required for erythropoiesis. A deficiency of B12 causes pernicious anemia. When I say pernicious, it is harmful form of anemia where lifespan of red blood cell is reduced, reduced from 120 days to 60 days. Now, Cassel's intrinsic factor, it's a chemical produced from auxentic cells. This is one chemical. And this is required for absorption of B12. I'm taking food with B12. But B12 for absorption requires Cassel's intrinsic factor. Now, where there is no Cassel's intrinsic factor, for example, uh, pernicious anemia is an autoimmune disorder. In that autoimmune disorders, Autoantibodies destroy auxentic cells. When auxentic cells are destroyed, there is no intrinsic factor, Cassel's intrinsic factor. 
Though I take food with vitamin B12, B12 is not absorbed and there is pernicious anemia in that case. The other type of cells are neck cells, also called goblet cells. They produce mucus. Now what are these neck cells? Neck cells are columnar in shape. It is having a depression like this. That is the cavity actually. The cavity, this area is narrow, this is broad. It resembles neck. That's why it's called as neck cell. It resembles the goblet. Goblets at one point of time, we had goblets like that to serve liquids wine etc there are large sized goblets with a narrow neck so neck cells goblet cells mucus producing cells the cell proper is here nucleus and cytoplasm is here they produce secretions secretions come outside through that pores the neck cells or goblet cells they produce mucus yeah Apart from these three, there are also something called as enterochromaffin cells. Enterochromaffin cells, they are also called EC cells, also called Kulchitsky cells. All same. Enterochromaffin cells, EC cells or Kulchitsky cells. These cells produce a substance called serotonin. Now serotonin produced by gut, 90% of the serotonin in body is actually produced from the gut, EC cells. Only. Of course EC cells are also present in small intestine and so in parts of other areas also. Stomach, small intestine, large intestine also, EC cells are present. So throughout the stomach and intestine, they see serotonin, there acts as neurotransmitter. It provides peristalsis, wave-like contraction. We, we eat the food here, we forget the, about the food there. After deglutition, we forget about the food. Then the food con moves wave-like. In a wave-like fashion, the food continues to move. The wave-like contraction of the food is called peristalsis. So it is called peristalsis. Peristalsis is initiated by serotonin. Serotonin in central nervous system, see serotonin is something which is produced from tryptophan. It is produced from an amino acid called tryptophan. From the same tryptophan, niacin is also produced. Serotonin in, our, in central nervous system, there it acts like a neurotransmitter. Endochromaffin cells are neuroendocrine cells. That means when a nerve stimulus stimulates them, when a, when a nerve comes and stimulates them, they produce hormones. The hormone, the, there is serotonin. In brain, serotonin is a neurotransmitter. It gives happiness, provides good mood. In antidepressants, when you take antidepressants, the antidepressants, they will prevent the breakdown of serotonin. Because once serotonin accumulates in the postsynaptic membrane, it gives more of happiness. Serotonin is also present in the wasps. In the poisonous stings of wasps, it is present. It is also present inside the secretory granules of pathogenic amoeba. And it is also present inside the fruit, packed along with the fruit, so that when, when animals engulf the fruit, serotonin, it's, it's a mild laxative there, so it is helping in adjustment of that um, seeds, propagation of seeds. So serotonin at different places has got multiple effects. But 90% of the serotonin is released from the, released inside the gut by easy cells. And much of that serotonin, after entering into the blood, 
some of that serotonin is taken up by blood platelets blood platelets the blood platelets they are useful serotonin there is useful for vasoconstriction that we discussed lastly there is another type of cell inside the fundi glands they are called ecl cells also called enterochromaffin like cells ECL cells also called enterochromaffin like cells these produce histamine you must not confuse this histamine with the histamine that is released from mast cells and basal cells <coughs> histamine is it is released at several places it is also released in brain also when released in brain it's a neurotransmitter histamine is a neurotransmitter so it prevents sleep and causes awakening when you take that uh, medicines for running nose some of them they act as antihistamines they go and attach to histamine receptors so and uh, that causes sleep or a period of time it causes sleep now histamine here with reference to digestive system histamine has got other effects the other effect is uptake of carbon dioxide and water it's acting directly on the parietal cells histamine produced from enterochromaffin cells they act on parietal cells see this cell what is the function to take carbon dioxide and water to produce hydrochloric acid now this is allowing this cell to take more of carbon dioxide and water so that more hydrochloric acid is produced now antacids when you are taking antacids for some people they more of acid is produced when spicy food is taken so it's acting on directly here so this is this area so when it is acting antacids when you take it is not allowing this cell to take up carbon dioxide and water only so amount of h plus ions produced will be less and so less of acid there so gastric glands or the glands present inside the gastric pits so in the wall of the stomach in the wall of the stomach so beneath the mucus layer there are pits called gastric pits also called foveolae gastrice there are 90 to 100 gastric pits in one square millimeter each gastric pit contains 3 to 7 gastric glands gastric glands present in the cardiac stomach are called cardiac glands pyloric stomach are called pyloric glands both of them produce basically mucus though in pyloric glands the g cells produce a hormone called as gastric the major gastric glands are that which are present in the fundus and the body they are called fundi glands also called auxentic glands all the glands are present inside mucosa they are present inside the mucosa of stomach now cells includes five different types of cells the main cells includes the chief cells the peptic cells or zymogen cells the, these cells produce various enzymes pepsinogen proreinin and gastric lipase the auxentic cells are parietal cells and delomorphous cells all same so these are the cells that produce hydrochloric acid and casel intrinsic factor hcl kills bacteria and casel intrinsic factor is useful for absorption of vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is called cyanocobalamin next cells are goblet cells they produce mucus ec cells are enterochromaffin cells they are also called as kulchetskai cells they produce serotonin serotonin is useful for peristalsis enterochromaffin cells ecl cells so these cells produce histamine histamine remember this is not histamine produced from mast cells basal cells this histamine here acts on parietal cells to take in more of carbon dioxide and water so that more acid is produced so it's actually affecting the parietal cells actually <coughs>